Hi, welcome back to the shop. Well, we're getting close to completing the trunk desk. Since the last episode, just because of time constraints and, and family and holidays, I went ahead and constructed the drawers and got those fitted and the drawer glides installed and I also put the finish on. Today, we're going to work on the drawer fronts. Now, I have two drawer fronts I need to build. One is down at the bottom of the cabinet and that's going to be for uh, the paper drawer where we can store reams of paper and whatever else we need. The other one is for this pull-out kind of keyboard drawer that you can either put a keyboard if you had a monitor or something like that up here. In this case, we can just set a laptop in here. The front is just going to fold down so that it's uh, a little more accessible. Now below that, there's an open space, and that's where the printer is actually going to go. But I need to get these, and that I'm going to have two doors that are going to open up to gain access to the printer, and those will be raised panel doors, just like the, uh, or excuse me, flat panel doors, just like the uh, the sides of, of the of the carcass. But I need to get these other drawer fronts in first before I can determine the size of that. We're also going to start working on the cubicle compartments that are going to go up above. And that's going to have some vertical compartments, some shelving, horizontal compartments, maybe for books or something like that. A couple of drawers, that sort of thing, kind of a charging area um, for anything that, that needs to be charged. Uh, and then we'll also have an open area down here. As I mentioned before, we're going to have a panel somewhere underneath this where we can uh, put the electrical cords and that sort of thing. So you can't kind of hide them so they can't see them. And they'll probably just be held in with magnets or something like that. So to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole so I can start mounting the uh, electronics in this. And this is the surge suppressor that I'm going to use. And that's just going to fit way in the back here uh, and I'll just drill a hole that'll go down and then snake out the back so it can be plugged into the wall. To do that I'm just going to use an inch and an eighth hole saw. Before drilling the holes I went ahead and pulled all the drawers out and I'm just going to drill the inch and eighth hole as far back as I can but about three inches or so away from the edge that way I can avoid any of the drawer glide mechanisms. Now that we have the surge suppressor in place, we can get a better idea of where we want our panel to go. And it's going to probably come somewhere between about halfway up this panel here. That'll give me plenty of room for other components that need to be, be hidden back here. To make the cubicle section up above, I've gone ahead and made a quick sketch up. The cubicle area is basically going to be divided into three sections. Uh, the right and the left side will be mirror images of each other and the interior section will actually just be left open with a couple of shelves uh, with this bottom shelf down here being where all the uh, charging cords are going to be. I've gone ahead and you can see I've broken up both my my heights, my elevations and my different widths and come up with a cut list and we can go ahead and start working on that at this time. I've gone ahead and ripped several strips of half inch Baltic birch plywood into 10 inch strips and that will be the the depth of the cabinet. Uh, we're going to start by cutting the bottom, the middle, and the top and those will be at 21 and a half inches. Next, I'll cut the two vertical pieces at 13 inches. And next, I'll just use a temporary stop block attached to my crosscut sled to cut the remaining pieces. In order to mark the rabbits and the dados for the side, I went ahead and built a little story stick that I could use and lay this out. When I did that, I didn't just measure a half inch and then reset the, the uh, ruler and then measure three and a half and then another half and then three. You want to start at the bottom 
and measure consistently all the way to the top so that you know every time you move that ruler you're going to incorporate some error into your story stick and this way it keeps things as true as it can get now that i have the story stick i can use it for either marking on the board itself or I can take that over to the router table and use that for my setup. To make the rabbits at the top and the bottom of the side pieces I've just gone ahead and put a rabbiting bit uh, in my router table and I will do this just in a couple of passes raising the bit up slowly between each pass. Now that I have the rabbits cut at both the top and the bottom of my side pieces, I can go ahead and cut the half inch dado that's three and a half inches up from the bottom. And to do that, I've just used my story stick to set everything up. From here, I'll go ahead and continue to set up and cut the necessary dados based on my story stick. Now that all the rabbits and dados are made, I can go ahead and glue it up. I've already done a dry assembly, so it's just uh, a matter of putting things together for the final time. the glue up is done I'll go ahead and let the glue set up and then I can go back through and I have two more shelf dividers to make on each side um, for the smaller drawers. To cover up the edge grain of the plywood I'm going to use some heat sensitive adhesive uh, veneer uh, tape and we're just going to put that in place and then I'm going to use an iron to do this. I really should get a separate iron just for this instead of the one I used to iron my work clothes with but this is way more important than work clothes. Put that down. It just takes a second. You might want to rub it with something. To hold it down. Now you notice I stayed away from the edges and, and you'll see why in just a, a few minutes here. Okay, make sure that's held down. We're going to put this all the way around the outside and then we'll trim the corners. Using an old piece of laminate, I've just laid it down here. I'm going to go ahead and rough trim the outside edge. I'm going to do that all the way around. Now that everything has been rough trim to approximate size. I'm just going to go ahead and take this plane iron from an old Japanese plane and I'm just going to set it in the corner on a diagonal on a 45. I'm going to pop down through the uh, layer, the veneer here, and then I can fold that over and heat that up and I'll have a nice mitered joint. And of course I'll come back here and finish cleaning this up in a little bit. There you go. Now that the cubicle compartment for the desk, uh, at least the carcass part, is done and I have some finish on that, I'm going to go ahead and start making the drawers for this. For the material I'm going to be using for the front, sides, and back, I'll be using this quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. And then for the front, I'm going to have some cherry that I just milled down to half inch. I've gone ahead and rabbited uh, three sides on the front and the back, and then I've just taken long strips and rabbited those for the sides. 
To determine the sides of the drawer, I measured the distance to the back of the drawer, which is nine and three quarters. And then all I have to do is figure out what the thickness that I have left after the rabbits have been removed uh, from the front and the back. And so to do that, I just put them back to back. I can uh, use this gizmo here and measure the, the thickness, which is about nine sixteenths. So I know that I have nine and three quarters. And I subtract nine sixteenths from that. That leaves me with three sixteenths of an inch. And that's the length that I need to make my sides. And I can just do that over at the table saw. I set up a stop block and went ahead and cut a test piece and everything looks good. So now I can just cut all the pieces at once. In this case, I, since I have two drawers, I need to cut four pieces. I went ahead, took some measurements, cut all the bottom pieces for all the drawers, and now it's time to do a little bit of assembly. For assembling these, I'm just going to be using uh, glue to hold them together and uh, some blue tape uh, with the construction. And then to kind of, as a clamp, I'm gonna be using this stuff. This is um, some green uh, latex rubber, whatever it is, uh, giant rubber band thing. Um, if you have an active lifestyle, like I like to call it, uh, my wife says I'm accident prone. You, you, you have the opportunity to visit some really wonderful people called physical therapists and they love using this stuff um, for exercises. You just tie a knot in it wherever you need and stretch it over your project and you, whatever size you need, you've got a clamp. I'm now ready to start building the panel that will cover up all the cords in the back. To do that, I've just gone ahead and cut some styles and rails out of some cherry. And to join them together, I'm just gonna be using pocket screws. Joinery is not an issue in this. Strength is not an issue. This is just purely cosmetic. to go ahead and assemble the framework for the panel now. That's what I really love about pocket nails. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the end of the piece. I know it's long grain to end grain, but you know what? Can't hurt. Let's get that lined up. There we go, and just like that, we have a finished frame. The other nice thing I like about this is that I can go straight from here over and start doing more machine work on it. I'm now ready to go ahead and cut the rabbit in the back side of the panel. Uh, this isn't going to be tongue and groove like it was before. Like I said, this is just aesthetic. Once the rabbits were cut, I just squared off the corner with a chisel, and then I grabbed some uh, maple that I had for my supply and made some just some panels. I didn't raise these or anything, and I went ahead and put some finish on it, uh, and so we can go ahead and install those. To install them, I'm just going to lay them in the rabbit, and then I made a couple of just little uh, uh, clips here um, out of some scrap plywood that I can use to hold that down. 
These clips will be held in place with some number six three quarter inch wood screws. And there we go. One of the things you might notice is that there are screws in all of the corners and those are to line up with some magnets that will hold the panel in place. So there we go, that's what the panel is going to look like in the end. Let's go ahead and start doing some installation. Well at this point you can start to get an idea of what the completed desk is going to look like. Uh, what we're going to do now is install the, uh, the drawer section or the cubicle section that's going to go up here. And one of the things you're going to notice here is I've drilled a series of holes on the bottom. I drilled a, a couple of uh, two inch holes uh, on the right and left side and then a couple of holes down here that are five eighths. Uh, and these are going to be where the, uh, the charging cords are going to come up through. And I'll explain what these holes are for in just a little bit. To install this in the cabinet, I'm just going to put up a couple of posts on either side here. And then I will also have just a block that I'm going to attach to the back and, and uh, hold it up that way. So the first thing I want to do is install this block in the back. And to do that, I'm just going to kind of center it by eye. And I'm going to use the posts that I cut to set the height of the block. And I'll just hold that in place. For the side posts, I've already pre-drilled and inserted some screws. I've also put in a couple of uh, metal cups at the top and the bottom, and these are going to hold magnets that will hold the panel in place. Now that the posts are in place, I can slide the cubicles into spot. Into spot. Now that the shelves have been installed, uh, I went ahead and kind of hooked up some of the stuff that we can charge with. There's a couple of things, uh, transformers, one for the uh, computer, one for the printer. And to cover everything up, we're going to go ahead and play, put this panel into place. And it should just click in with those magnets. There we go. Now, in order to get this out, that's in there pretty tight, but because of the holes that we drilled up inside of here, I can just reach in and pop that out and open that up whenever I need access to that. We can go ahead and install the drawers. Uh, one of the things I like to do, if possible, when I build a project is to put in a secret compartment and I did that uh, with this project as well. Uh, so right up here in the top, if you remove these two drawers, you can pull on the divider between the two and you can pull out just a small small little compartment big enough for a Snickers bar or something like that. And really when it comes to secret compartments that's all I really put in them. Um, you don't want to put in things that will burn up just in case there's a fire. So cash, bear bonds, those sorts of things, probably not a good idea to store up there. We're ready to wrap up this project now. There's still a few things that need to be done. I have a couple of drawer fronts that are made, uh, but I'm still waiting for the finish to dry before I can assemble them. I do have a door that I need to uh, make for the uh, printer down here, or a couple doors, but I don't have the hardware for that yet, so I can't uh, finish that. Uh, my wife also hasn't chosen the hardware for the drawers up above, so we're still waiting on that, but uh, pretty much this project is, is, is basically done except for that. Now the project overall was designed to do a couple of things. One, um, as a computer desk uh, for my kids to uh, do their homework on out here and I think that worked out pretty well. The other thing is this is basically a Noah's Ark for Apple products. Um, our family seems to have been addicted to them. We have usually a couple iPods, a couple iPhones, 
couple iPads. Um, as you can imagine uh, we need a lot of charging space for all these projects and I think it accommodates that well. So as far as the cuss jar on this project, and I'd like to remind you that it's not to mean that that's what I'm doing out in the, in the garage, only my wife uses that kind of language. This is more just a, a way to rank the project as far as how difficult it was. And I look at four basic things, uh, the materials, the machining, the assembly, and the finish. The materials themselves were fine. The cherry and the, uh, the maple did great. I had a little bit of problem with cupping on the, the panels uh, just because they were uh, so wide. So that caused me a little bit of problems. And I had a little bit of issue with the, the machining just getting good flat grooves. And you see in, I think, episode one, we, we took care of that uh, just making a special tool that I could use to flatten out those areas. So for those two things, I would probably put in a couple quarters a piece. Nothing, nothing really serious. The actual assembly of the project was a little difficult because it was so big that I couldn't assemble the whole thing out in my shop. And it wasn't until I actually got it in the house and, and put together before I could actually see what it was going to look like in the space. Um, laying down, it looked fine. Standing up, you know, I probably would have made the doors not quite as deep. But uh, that was the only real issue. But it was just a hassle to assemble it and move everything out of the way so I could cut a board, um, that sort of thing. So for that was a problem. The, the biggest problem I ran into with this project, though, was the finish. I tried to put the majority of the finish on in December, uh, which was happened to be the fourth wettest December on record. So when it's 45 degrees and raining, um, finish doesn't dry real well. Uh, I tried a number of different ways to get the finish to dry better. I tried different finish combinations. I actually ended up sanding off the finish three times and reapplying it before I finally got something that I was happy with. Uh, so for that, um, that was probably the biggest frustration I've ever had. And so the, the actual assembly and finish, you know what, I don't have enough quarters for that. So I'm just putting like five dollars uh, into the cuss jar for this project. That about wraps this project up. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please feel free to email me at andrew at thelevelplumbandsquare.com. And until next time, enjoy your day.